Hey guys, in this video I'm going to answer a question somebody has. They've completed the basic foundation courses and they want to know how to start the process of getting their very first freelance clients as a web designer. So let's just jump into it and uh, there'll be some other little tidbits as well. Hi Steph, I have a few questions. I've completed a few study web courses and certification tests, but I haven't done much in way of the actual projects other than my website, which I just started building. So you got to do the projects that are in the foundation courses and one or two, maybe three of the projects that I include with my complete web developer package. Could you perhaps give me a few suggestions on what kinds of projects I should work on that I should showcase on my website that might be a good at attracting prospective clients or employers. So first thing you got to do is build your website. So he started building it. You got to build your website. He sent me a basic layout that he had in mind. It looks very good. looks pro, looks slick. So he's got to build that out. And since you're just starting out and you haven't done any real projects, the first level of building reputation, of course, is to display whatever certifications that you have. So fortunately, he's got the web, web mentoring program. So he's got the I don't know if he's done all five certifications. We have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python. But you should put up those certifications. So whether you're using Studio Web or some other platform that has proper certifications, not so much certificates of completion. That's okay, but certifications are better because certifications means you're actually being tested. Anyhow, so when you're first starting out, it's kind of a catch-22. What does that mean? You want to get a job, but to get a job, you need to show some ability. But how do you show ability if you don't have a job? That's where you follow my steps. Step one, you learn your foundations. He's learned his foundations. Step two, certifications. If you want that, you get the certifications. But much more importantly is you want to get projects. So to get your first projects, you got to put up a good-looking website that is uh, your own website. If you're not a designer, just get a nice template and customize it, make sure it looks good, follow the basic rules of design, and you know your code so you won't mess anything up. And once you have your basic website up, um, you wanna reach out to local businesses. So let me continue. Uh, I've, uh, I apologize if you've answered this question somewhere else. I'm thinking of emailing a small business owner that I know, that's fantastic, it's called a warm lead to offer to build her a website for free though i doubt she needs one and i'm not sure i should since i don't have my website up yet first of all get your website up second of all since you know her that's fantastic and even if she doesn't have a website say sell her say listen she get a website anyway it's free you're giving it to her for free right she has nothing to lose she'll work with you Make sure she participates so you get the information, images that you may need, etc. Put up the website. Why do you want to do that? A, you're going to learn how to put up a website working with a third party. Treat it like it's a paid client. Even though you're doing it for free as part of your training, treat the uh, interaction and the process of building the site for this person that you know, a small business owner. Treat it like it is uh, an actual real paid gig. So follow the freelance course you ask you know this guy because he's part of the mentoring group he has access to the freelance course of course follow the freelance course the freelance course gives you a step-by-step -step how to do all this including how to uh structure uh, a project different you know from deal first reaching out to the client coming up with your first proposals etc et and there's the templates to use so do that follow that so uh yeah so definitely go see this person and offer to build their site for free. Because once you have a live site that belongs to real business that you can show and profile on your site, that's huge credibility. That's more important than the certifications, especially more important than certificates. So you want to do that. That's a great opportunity for you. If she doesn't want to do it because she's busy or whatever, find somebody else, find some other small, it could be a coffee shop owner, your local butcher, the key is to show that you've done work for a real live business. He continues, I'm attaching a screenshot of my homepage 
of my website just to give you an idea of the layout I'm trying to achieve. It looks good, it looks modern. I'm not sure how fancy it needs to be though. It does not need to be fancy. Just look at what the modern site looks like today. You can go type in Google, modern websites for today, modern layouts. There's certain design aesthetics that are in vogue or not in vogue. Simply speaking, without getting into a whole lesson of design and, and um, aesthetics in modern in 2020, um, you want to have nice looking photos, really good images. Don't skimp on getting nice, clear photos, whether it be of yourself or some backdrops of your city or, or people designing a website. You, you want to have clean photos. You want to have simple uh, text. You don't want to have huge paragraphs, five blocks of talking about you. This, you know, one or, you know, your paragraph should be two, three lines, four max. So you have a paragraph. Hey, I'm blah, blah, blah. My name is Steph. I'm, I'm a software developer from the 1990s, and I've worked on many projects, including this and this and this. But if you're a beginner, you might go, Hi, my name is uh, Nick and I am a new web developer, designer, and I've trained in these and these courses, and I'm happy to work with you to develop your beautiful website presence. And then you have another, then you have like another paragraph with your skills. And just, you know, I am skilled in the following uh, languages and technologies, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, but not too long. You don't want to give them your life story. Talk about your dogs or your cats or you like going skiing or you like playing Apex. They don't care about that. Simple, concise writing, to the point. People scan pages. They don't read, especially small business owners. Small business owners are busy. So they're just going to scan and they're going to make judgments based on A, that your writing is simple and clear, and that you have really nice images and you got a good layout. That's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, so we go on. I was on killer sites looking at domain names and hosting and was a little surprised. Okay, well, let me, before I get into it, just in case you don't know, I run studioweb.com today, which is my learning SaaS used in schools and by individuals. But I got into the game of tech education and so forth way back in the day, and I own killersites.com, which I've been managing since around the year 2000. Anyway, so I do have wholesale and domain name stuff, not to promote, but I'm just giving you a little background. Um, I was on killer sites looking at domain names and hosting. I was a little surprised that he names a uh, website address, a URL, a uh, domain name. Uh, he was surprised that this particular domain name was available, but I was thinking that address is pretty... Uh, Canadian, he's from Canada, I guess. But what if I could add my own custom extensions to make it even more Canadian? So he gives a suggestion there. So I'm not going to name the domain name because I don't know if he bought it yet. <laughs> oh, but I have to say, it's a fantastic domain name, and I'm surprised too that it's available. So let me give you a couple of tips about buying domain names. First of all, Tip number one, buying good domain names these days is harder and harder and harder and harder and harder because there's so many people on the web and it just keeps expanding. That said, what you want to look for in a good domain name is the domain name should be simple. Simple to spell and simple to remember. Great domain names, apple.com, right? Pretty good domain name. Yahoo.com, good domain name. Easy to spell, easy to remember. Studioweb.com, again, easy to spell, easy to remember. So that's the first thing, uh, first two tips about domain names. Easy to remember, easy to spell. If the domain name can convey a message about your business, all the better, but not necessarily necessary. For example, if you're Apple, rare exception, biggest company in the world, biggest company in the universe, uh, we know Apple is not selling actual apples. We know Apple. But you might have... Um, if you're selling a new uh, uh, range of coffee products, you might, Amazing Coffee might be a great domain name. Easy to spell, uh, gives a quali qualifier about the quality of your product. It's amazing. And it's coffee, right? If you have the, the domain name Amazing Coffee and you're selling um, memory cards for cinema cameras, it might not be so good. Although, Amazing Coffee is actually a pretty good domain name. 
I wonder if it's available. I didn't, I didn't check, I'm just joking around. So yeah, so there's a few tips about domain names, uh, definitely. I can go on about that, but we'll leave it there. So he goes, what do you think? Uh, that address is so Canadian, it's practically dripping syrup. Yeah, I like this guy, he's funny. If you don't know, syrup, maple syrup is a very Canadian product, uh, especially Eastern Canada, very famous for Canadian syrup. If you don't know what syrup is, because I know people from all around the world watch these videos, syrup is, is uh, the sap, the liquid that comes out of trees. So in Canada, we do the silly thing by pegging trees with spikes and we milk the trees and the sap that comes out is in process and it's turned into this uh, syrupy gooey stuff which you put on toast and pancakes. It's very tasty. Um, anyway, yeah. The only downside I could say about his domain name, it's, uh, it tells, it's, it's very specific to Canada. But I don't think it's going to matter if you're becoming, if you're a web designer, web developer, software developer, and you're from Canada, eh, it's pretty good. You know, it's, uh, why not? You might find more favor uh, from people in Canada because, oh, Canadian, we're Canadian, that's cool. But I think Canada has pretty good uh, reputation overall. Yeah. Anyway. That's pretty much it. I hope you got something out of this video. One of the key things about being a great developer is creating uh, um, an expectation from people, uh, an expectation of uh, quality and dependability, of professionalism. And the way you do that, I discuss a bunch of the ways. But remember, how what your site looks like, how it's presented, how it's written, how clear, how simple, clean is very important. Well, same thing with yourself, by the way. You know, what you, how you dress, you know, your nails, you know. Don't smell. These are all advice. It's all along the same paths. There you go. So uh, I hope you found this video uh, useful. Bye-bye.